Apple shocked me with its announcement of a new Mac Studio desktop with its small form factor packed in with a massive amount of power in the form of the M1 Ultra chip with not only a 20 core CPU design that looks like it's going to destroy previously what was Apple's most powerful computer, the Intel Mac Pro, but also with a 64 core GPU that promises to be even more expensive dedicated graphics cards options available in that full size desktop tower. However, perhaps the truly scary thing is, is that this M1 Ultra chip still isn't the full power of Apple Silicon, because Apple almost proudly let us in on a little secret that an even more powerful computer is still coming with a Apple Silicon Mac Pro. So what can we really expect for a chip beyond M1 Ultra? And just how powerful can Apple Silicon get? And spoiler alert, you need to watch the whole video because what I'm about to tell you is literally insane. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and we are just a few days away from finally getting our hands on the new Mac Studio and Studio Display. So if you're new here, make sure you get subscribed because it's gonna be an exciting few weeks covering this new Mac computer and this new Mac chip, and you're not gonna wanna miss any of it. Oh, and if you're a returning viewer, or hey, even if you're new, hit the like button because that obviously helps me out too. So yes, you didn't mishear my intro. There is still a Mac Pro on the way, and while we may not know exactly what this desktop tower will end up looking like, we actually have a pretty good idea of what chips are going to be inside of this machine. And that's because of the excellent reporting we have had since the beginning on the details of chips like the M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and even the M1 Ultra chip. If you've been following my videos talking about this, you know that Mark Gurman has basically given us every detailed stat on these chips early, down to the exact number of CPU and GPU core counts and configurations of each individual chip. And he has even given us reporting on what to expect beyond the M1 Ultra chip with what he is currently calling the M1 Extreme, or actually to be more precise, the M2 Extreme chip. Because as it stands right now, the M1 Ultra is the last M1 chip that Apple introduced, and Apple's next M2 chip that goes beyond the M1 Ultra will be the M2 Extreme. Because at Apple's last event, take their own words, they said the M1 Ultra was the last M1 chip, which means that for the Mac Pro, Apple's actually jumping ahead to the M2, and they're going all the way to the top, because as it stands right now, the M2 Max may be coming out sooner than we initially thought, with German reporting that from now until June might actually be the time frame that Apple is looking to start launching some of their M2 Macs, and the biggest and baddest M2 Mac will apparently be a new version of the Mac Pro with the most powerful M2 Extreme chip. So the Mac Pro will be completely skipping over any of the M1 chips and focusing entirely on the next generation of Apple Silicon, which means that its performance boost will be much more than just adding cores, because like I've told you guys for a while now, the future M2 chips, unlike the M1 Pro, Max, or even the Ultra chip we have seen up until now, will be faster in every single way, and that includes single core performance. That's because like the M1 chip was based on the A14 chip, the M2 chip is based on the A15 chip, and the A15 chip is able to achieve even more performance at the same energy usage as the A14 chip. And if we follow that same logic of a performance boost, we are looking around an 11% performance gain for the M2 chip. So if we use a benchmark like Geekbench, we can see that theoretically an M2 chip would net us around a 1,830 single core score. Now our main focus on this video is the M2 Extreme chip, the most powerful version of Apple Silicon, but let me address this base level M2 chip first because I think it's important to understanding the overall power boost we might see with this future chip. Because unlike the M1 Max, which have kind of just increased in multi-core performance by adding more cores, M2 chips will get stronger by making each of those individual cores stronger. So if you take what will end up being the M2 chip and compare it against something like that entry level six core M1 Pro chip with its multi-core performance, well, just because those individual M2 cores are stronger, if we take a hypothetical score from Geekbench again, I think we will see around a 9,000 Geekbench benchmark putting it just below that six high performance core M1 Pro machines. So just by strengthening those existing four M1 CPU cores, the M2 chip sees a significant boost in multi-core performance as well, which will mean that anything we talk about 
with M2 Pro or M2 Max or M2 Ultra and even the M2 Extreme will benefit as well from that increased multi-core performance. That also carries over to the GPU because the M2 will also probably feature a stronger GPU. And if you look at the A15, that's actually where most of the power increase went. And besides just a more powerful GPU, uh, Mark Gurman is also reporting that unlike the M2 chip, which will be keeping the same base CPU cores, M2 chips can expect even more GPU cores even at the base level. So just the baseline M2 chip, the chip that will go on products like the entry-level Mac Mini and MacBook Air will go up from an eight core GPU design to a maximum of 10 GPU cores. That is all to say that basically everything will be improving on these M2 chips. But one thing I really can address in this video is how I would speculate how much powerful the M2 Extreme would be in the GPU department, not only with individually more powerful graphics cores, but also the sheer amount of GPU cores rumored for the M2 Extreme, which would be at least double that of the M1 Ultra chip with a whopping 128 GPU cores. In fact, all elements of the M2 Extreme chip would pretty much be doubled from that of the M1 Ultra because just like how the M1 Ultra was made by fusing two M1 Max chips together, the M2 Extreme would be made by fusing two Ultra chips together or four M1 Max chips together. That would mean 40 CPU cores, 128 GPU cores, and 256 gigabytes of unified memory on these extreme chipsets. So what does that mean for the potential power of a future Mac Pro? Well, like I told you, the M2 chip would get stronger at the individual core level, meaning we would see performance boosts even beyond my estimates. But to be conservative with my estimates, I basically looked at how much multi-core performance we are seeing on these leaked M1 Ultra chips in Geekbench benchmarks. Current benchmarks for the M1 Ultra give it a score of just above 24,000. For reference, a 28 core Intel Mac Pro is scoring below 20,000, meaning that this 20 core design that Apple has whipped up is even more powerful than their Intel Mac Pro, which has eight more cores attached to it. Truly outstanding performance for the M1 Ultra, especially when you consider it's packed into a way smaller form factor. And that performance scale, from the M1 Max to the M1 Ultra is basically just double the performance. Like there is no loss in performance from adding those two chips together. It is literally doubling the performance of the M1 Max chip, which is great. And it's already putting it about on par with the most powerful CPU in Geekbench benchmarks, AMD 64 core, AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3900, and 90X, that's a lot to say. Maybe I shouldn't be so harsh on Apple's uh, M1 naming scheme here. They're a lot more simpler to pronounce. So it stands to reason that a future M1 or M2 Extreme chip could work the same way as the Ultra, double the multi-core performance of the M1 Ultra chip. And if you work the math out yourself, you could see that means performance that goes to 48,000 multi-core performance in Geekbench and I don't have to say another word. Just look at the charts yourself. If that turns out to be anywhere close to being accurate, hey, let's say I'm even off by a few thousand points. This puts the M2 Extreme, the Mac Pro desktop, at the top of the charts in multi-core performance. It's not even close. You know what this means? It means in two years, Apple Silicon will have already established itself as the most powerful CPU you can get in a machine. And if that isn't amazing to you, I don't know what is. What Apple is doing here is truly extraordinary, and we may never see another jump in performance this quickly, at least for a long period of time. And while the market is limited for a Mac Pro type of device, I get that this is probably going to end up being very expensive, and you may never in a million years intend to buy one of these, uh, it doesn't matter. The performance benefits we are seeing with Apple Silicon is going across their entire Mac lineup. I mean, think about it. The Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra chip is already pretty much on par with the AMD Threadripper uh, 3990X. And while the Mac Studio is expensive at $4,000, it's also delivering value unheard of in that performance price range because that AMD chip retails for around the same price point as the entire Mac Studio just for the CPU. The Mac Studio is a full computer with the CPU, the GPU, the memory, the storage, and yeah, it's a computer. It's not just a chip. 
Th that is great. And it's a change in how we talk about the Mac because my friends, the Apple tax as we may know it, at least for Macs, is dead. And Apple may be delivering the best performance per dollar of any computer on the entire market. But yeah, so far that is everything we know about the future M2 Extreme chip. You can tell how excited I am and how powerful that future Mac Pro may end up being. So if you found this video informative, drop me a like. If you wanna see a peek at this performance uh, this Friday, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we got the Mac Studio coming in. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.